In today's fast-paced world, developing 21st century skills are crucial for success in various aspects of life. Sports has the potential to be a powerful platform for implicitly developing these skills as it provides an experiential medium for learning. These videos aim to showcase a series of sample sport-based activities that can effectively develop essential skills such as problem-solving, critical thinking, communication and leadership among participants. To be successful in today's fast-paced life, it is crucial to learn 21st century skills. But the question is, how? The answer to this complex question is straightforward. Playing sports is a great way to do this without even realizing it because it provides hands-on experience in learning. The next five videos are here to show some fun sports activities that can help you improve at important skills like problem solving, careful thinking, communication and leadership. Every video focuses on one sport and related skills. In this video, we are going to learn how an activity like Bulldog can help us develop the critical thinking and problem solving skill. The question here is, why are critical thinking and problem solving skills so important? The answer is that when you become better at solving problems, it helps you in many ways. You can handle conflicts better, become more independent, reach tough goals and make decisions on your own. It's like gaining the right power to face the challenges of the 21st century. The videos will cover everything about the activity, how to set it up, how to play, what happens next and a discussion at the end to understand how it went. Let's see. The purpose of this activity is to teach participants how an activity like Bulldog can help them learn to figure out and solve different problems they might face in their everyday lives. This game can be played indoors or outdoors. You will need a playground of the size of 50 feet into 30 feet. Time required for this activity is 45 minutes. You also need 20 to 25 flat cones and 10 players for the game to start. The facilitator uses flat cones to create a rectangular grid measuring 40 into 20 feet, divided by a line in the middle. Three people are chosen to be attackers, while the remaining participants become the runners in the game. The attackers stand on the center line and the runners line up on one side of the playing area. The facilitator starts the game by blowing a whistle. The runners have to run from one side to the other without getting tagged by the attackers. The attackers try to tag the runners by touching them. If a runner is tagged by the attackers, he or she joins the attacking team. If they don't get tagged, he or she keeps running to the other end of the playing area. The game continues until there are no runners left. There can be variations to the game, like after the first round, the facilitator can give the attackers and runners two minutes to talk and plan how to do well in the game. To make the game a bit more challenging, the facilitator can tell the runners or attackers to hop on one leg. An obstacle course can also be added for the runners to pass before running to the opposite end of the court. The game can also be made more fun and competitive. Everyone is split into two teams and the facilitator is the only attacker. The teams take turns running from one side to the other of the ground. After each turn, the team with the most people on the opposite side wins. After the game, it's important to talk about what happened. This discussion helps us think about our strategies, how each person and the team performed. It's a really important tool to get better over time, learn more and improve how we play in the future. After the activity is done, the facilitator gathers everyone and leads a reflection session where everyone can share their thoughts. The facilitator wants everyone to say what they think. To make the players comfortable, some easy and guiding questions can be asked like what problems did you face in this game? How did you identify these problems? What strategies did you use to address those problems? Did it work? Why? Why not? Did you try evaluating the outcome? 
If yes, then how did it help you in the subsequent rounds of the game? In the later parts of the game, did you talk with your group? Did you work together to understand problems and come up with solutions as a team? Please tell us about it. What problems do you face in your daily life? How do you deal with them? How important do you think is problem solving in our life? The facilitator can also ask other relevant questions from the practitioner to probe further. Problem solving is a way of dealing with issues. It involves figuring out what the problem is, thinking about it and trying out different ways to fix it. This skill can be applied to all sorts of situations, whether it's a small issue like getting home when the bus is broken or a more significant problem where we feel uncomfortable and need a solution. Learning 21st century skills helps us be prepared for what is coming in the future.